So this is my official welcome to the new studio. Well, it's actually not new. We just reset it with my man Eric, who is my supervisor producer guy, who uh, suggested that we make some changes. So here we are. Big day today. Big talk today. You know, normally we talk about leads and we talk about strategies, and we will today, of course. But um, kind of crazy times we have entered, right? A few months ago, when I started hearing about this whole virus thing, I thought, eh, it's just going to blow over. It's just one of, not of, one of those media scare things. Doesn't seem that way anymore, does it? Hmm. Things are changing. We are in a weird time right now, right? Like, it can go either way. And I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not here to tell you what's going to happen. But I will give you some practical tips. I will give you some practical guidance. I will give you some tools to help you. Because I don't know whether you've been in the business long enough, but do you guys remember 9-11 when it hit the first moment? I heard the first report. And this kind of reminds me that the, the, the feel out there is similar, isn't it? In many ways. I um, first heard about the attacks in New York City when I was in the car. I was driving. I was in Los Angeles at the time, driving to my gym. And first I thought, ah, it's no big deal. It's just some idiot Cessna plane just stroke, stroke, popped a, a building, you know, and it's not going to be a big deal. It's, the media is making a big deal out of it. Well, it didn't turn out that way. But just like we survived 9-11, we survived 2007, 8, 9. We survived late, what was it, late 80s? when the interest rates were 14, 15 percent. We've been through some tough times. We've been through some thick and thin. And we made it through. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm going on record with this. We're going to make it through this just fine. Now, I'm not saying I'm pretending it's easy. I'm not saying it's going to be a walk in the park. It's not. I never said that. But I do know that we have the resilience, we have the persistence, we have the wherewithal, we have the intelligence, and we're going to band together, and in many ways this will be good for us as a nation, good for us as people in general, to finally drop some of that bullshit and the contentions and the stupid arguments we sometimes have and focus on what really matters. So I do believe that in a way this is actually good for us. I'm not saying it's easy. It's going to be tough. It is tough already. I mean, stock market, people dying. It is a challenge. Life as we know it is going to change, at least for time being. And there's a very good chance you and I will get that bugger. That we'll catch that bug. Now, I sincerely hope and pray that it's not going to be serious and we're going to get through this. So what does that mean in real estate? How is that going to impact us as far as business? How do you run your business? And not just to survive, but to thrive. And I know I had originally intended, and I have my notes, and I will give you some practical stuff that you can use on objections. Multimedia, full color, good notes. But it's more than that. Because people are genuinely scared. People are really nervous. And I'm sure you're encountering clients. You're encountering uh, buyers and sellers who are really skittish and scared, who want to back out of the deals. And some of you have had people who back out of the deals. And this will not going to stop anytime soon. So what does that mean? Where does that leave you? How do you approach all this? Now, I'm not going to give you the medical, by no means a medical expert or a viral expert or any of that. But I am an expert when it comes to human psychology. I'm an expert when it comes to human decisions and behavior. That's my specialty. I'm no good as far as sales, but I can give you an insight how to address the fears. Because there's a parallel between the fear your sellers have about the coronavirus and about the future of real estate and the stock market and the economy and all that. And it's just as big of a fear when they need to decide who they're going to list their house, are they going to move. Many sellers, especially those who've been in their house for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of, a lot of fear. And we as humans operate a lot on fear. Now, at times it serves us well, especially when we're running in the jungle and we heard something 
in the bushes. Running was the best thing. Being scared was the best thing because it triggered the adrenaline and whew, our best defense was get the hell out of there because compared to all the other beasts, we were really slow and really weak. Now today, you're not going to be chased by a saber-toothed tiger or a dinosaur, but the neurobiology hasn't changed much. So when something as big as what's happening right now is happening in the world, people will be very scared. And they will look up to you to be the lighthouse in this big shitstorm going on all around. Who will they trust? Who will they look up to? Because even though we are living in times of fear and uncertainty, I'm here to confess that I will tell you will see that. Thank you. This comes to play later. I'll tell you what that is for. <laughs> People still need to move. They still need guidance. They still need somebody who they can turn to, who they can trust, who can give them advice, who can hold their hand, especially now, and say, it's going to be all right. We got this. Because no matter what's going on out there, there are people who need to make the move. There is divorce. There is job transfer. There is baby on the way. There are all kinds of circumstances where it's not a matter of choice, where they simply have to. And data shows statistically, even when we had the September 11, remember 2001, there were still 5,180,000 uh, transactions closed. People still moved, even though the nation was in crisis and even though it was tough. It's going to be the same here. Different conditions. Yes, you have to follow certain different rules. It's going to be different. The social interactions will be different. There may come restrictions in play. Who knows? But business will go on. People will move. Homes will be sold. And I'm here to help you, not just because I want you to make a lot of money, obviously. You can't help anyone. You can't help yourself, your family, if you're broke. So there will be opportunities to get paid. But also, I would like you guys, my rock stars, the students and subscribers and members of our community here on Facebook, on YouTube, people listening to this as a podcast, to be the front runners, the leaders, the people who the community can count on for solid advice, not just driven by money and by greed, but driven by desire to be helpful, to be the guide, to be that light that people can rely on and count on. And you can be that. Now, it requires certain knowledge, it requires certain confidence, it will require certain skill, parables, of course. But it is expected of you guys to be out there where people don't know, when they hesitate, when they're scared. To be out there for them. Not just to gun for the listing, not just to gun for the paycheck. But be there as a contribution, as the kind advisor who people need right now. And boy, do they need it right now more than ever. Does that resonate with you? So let's talk about it. How do you do that? Good to have you, everybody. Tim saying hello. Irma says hi. Blue is here. Julia, Crystal, Anthony, Dane, Dave, Brian. Nice to have you guys. So let's talk about it. I do have an invitation for you because I believe now more than ever your skill will matter. And we're opening the registration for the boot camp. Now you may be thinking, well, fuck, Barino, how can you pitch your boot camp, your training right now with all that shit going on? Now is more than ever your time to hone your skills, to sharpen your soul, to really deliver the best marketing, the best communication, the best help you can offer to people who need it. Now you must stand out from your competition more than ever. Because I know, I, I share the most optimistic message I, I can possibly share with you. I'm not here to scare you. I'm not a fear monger, far from it. If anything, I'm the opposite of that. But do hear me on this, guys. It's going to be tougher. It's going to be more challenging. It's going to be more demanding. It's going to put more stress on your systems. It's going to put more stress on your time. It's going to require more effort. It's going to require really your A game. And those who deliver it and those who know how to do it and those who will have the persistence to stay with it will clean up. Because I've seen these things. I've seen them before. My first year in real estate, 40-some percent, about half of the listings, half of the inventory were foreclosures. Lots of REO properties. It was crazy. 14, 15% interest rates. It was nuts. 
But this difficult market not only helped me learn the skills and become good, but I also have seen through these tough times how this kind of opportunity creates tremendous wealth for people. And I want you to clean up and I want you to be one of those who looks back and says, yes, it was tough. Yes, I survived, but not just survived. I did well. I served my people, I served my clients, and I made a lot of money in the process. We're not going anywhere, friends. Don't you get scared. We're going to follow the rules. We're going to do the best we can. Maybe we won't shake hands for a while and use the fucking sanitizers and do all that stuff. But business will go on. It has to. Because even during the worst years in real estate, there were over 4 million homes sold. The worst, where savings and loans went kaboom, the banks exploded. Remember that? We still sold over 4 million properties as an industry here in the U.S. We know how to kick butt, and we're going to continue that. But first, keep in mind this. It is in your mindset first and foremost. Because the moment you start caving to the fear, you're going to start looking for the evidence. There's a part of your brain called reticular activator. They will start collecting more evidence. And the more evidence you start, the more emotions will trigger. The more emotions will trigger your thoughts, emotions, and actions start being consistent with the evidence you're collecting, you're screwed. Now, I'm not saying put your, dig your hip, head in the sand, stick, stick it in the sand. No, pay attention, be aware. But pay attention to opportunities as well. Chances to be the guide, to help people, to look for opportunities, to be out there. Yeah? Cool? All right. Yes, life goes on. That's a good comment. Let me show you. Shan Shan. Life does go on. We need to focus. Stay focused. And it does require insane amount of focus right now. Absolutely, yes. Strong focus. And it requires discipline. And it will require more work. It will require more repetition in follow-up, in prospecting, in lead generation, in running ads. You're going to have to put in more. But it will also scare off people who don't belong in this business in the first place. Think about that. People who shouldn't be in this business. And you and I know some of those people. You might have had deals with some of those people. There, we'll be gone. All right, friends. So how do you communicate with sellers? How do you help these people who are right now watching CNN, reading the paper, checking Facebook, and seeing all this craziness going on in the world? Italy on the lockdown. I was talking to my brother who lives in Europe. They're scared. Schools just closed down in my hometown. They're scared. My mom, she's 83. She is a primo target for this fucker to get her. She's scared. And I'm scared for them. But just because I'm scared doesn't mean I'm going to be paralyzed, doesn't mean I'm going to buy into the fear and act on that fear. I'm going to use my common sense and my passion. My common sense tells me, wash my hands, you know, do those things they tell us to do. And my passion tells me, I now more than ever need to help the community who needs me. Because here's what I know. If I can help 50, 60 of you who come to the boot camp, I know that you in turn can help 20, 30, 40 people this year, 50, maybe more. We will make this world a better place and make some money in the process. Because no matter how shitty it is out there, there will be people out there willing to pay you. There will be people out there who need your help. There will be people out there who will move with the help of a good agent. I want you to be that agent. So let's talk about objections because it's all connected. Objections represent fear. Objection is an outer expression of the inner fear that the sellers feel. So here's what it means. Imagine your sellers. Let's switch the camera so you can see my beautiful artwork. All right. Imagine... Here's an island, okay, and there is a water around the island. This is the beautiful palm tree, right? And here is your Mr. and Mrs. Seller. All right, and they're on this island. Yes, can you guys see it? And then there is another more beautiful island that has two palm trees. And Mr. and Mrs. Seller would love to live on this island. That's their dream. Now, it's either because this island is too small, it's because they hate it, or because this one is so fabulous, or there is something that pulls them. There is either something pushing them or something pulling them. The problem is there is all these treacherous waters all around. So they're starting thinking, how do we get to that island? How do we get to there? Here's what's happening in the island. There are sharks. There are obstacles. There are problems. And they see them, and they're scared. 
and now they're evaluating. Is the risk of getting to the new island, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Here's why this is important. The number one fear, the number one fear your prospects, your sellers have, that things will get worse. That either they will get eaten by the sharks, or this island from the distance is not what they expect it to be. That's the fear they're dealing with. That the process of getting there, that swimming through these waters, will be difficult, will be painful, it's going to cost them too much in time, in money, in effort. And they constantly shoot back and forth. We want to live on an island, but it's, 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 it's tough. I look at all these sharks and the water is really cold and it's so deep and I don't know if we can swim that far. I don't know if we have enough money to buy the boat to get there. That's where you come in. You come in with this beautiful big boat. All right, and you're right here saying, hey guys, I got this awesome boat. I can take you to the other side. I know how to do it. I help people just like you. This is a beautiful, safe boat. I've done it many times. I've took people just like you from one island to the bigger, better, more beautiful island. Did you know that on the other side of the island is this beautiful hut that overlooks the ocean? That's comfortable. That's awesome. You represent the solution. You are the safe passage. So now, in their mind, they're considering, should we, shouldn't we? Remember, the number one fear your prospects have, the number one fear is a fear of regret, that things on the new island will be worse, that they will regret the move. The second fear they have is they're going to go about it the wrong way. They're going to hire the wrong agent, they set the wrong price, they're going to screw up somewhere that's going to cost them either time or money or safety or something. So what they're weighing is two forces, the desire to move, which can be triggered by pain or by pleasure, and the fear. And as long as your prospects are hesitating, as long as they're not taking the steps, the fear is winning. Now, the fear is twofold. There are two parts to that fear. It can be both, but it's usually one or the other. Either they haven't crossed the threshold because what they're looking for is the threshold of certainty. Certainty that the new island will be fun, that we're going to go, we made a decision. And certainty that you and your boat will get them there safely. They need to reach this point of certainty on both. And this is why this is important. If you're getting objections, you as a master psychologist, as an expert on human behavior, and you are because you study my stuff, need to discern, decipher, determine which threshold they haven't crossed yet. Is it the threshold about the move? Or is it the threshold about you and your boat? Maybe they're questioning your captain skills. Maybe they're questioning how solid your boat is. Maybe they're wondering how many people have you taken in that boat across. Maybe they're afraid of those big sharks in that water. But you need to know what the fear is. Because it's one of two things. Certainty about you. They want to move. They're clear that this is better. They're just not sure about you. Or they like you. They trust you. They have a good relationship with you. But they're not so certain about the island. They're still weighing off the possibility of staying here. You need to know, as an expert, advisor, and guide, what am I dealing with? You need to ask. So let me show you. Is this helpful so far? Are you guys getting it? Because different fear needs to be addressed differently. If their concern is about the island, you don't need to sell them on the boat. You need to figure out, and they need to figure out, why the hell do they want to live on the bigger island or better island or different island in the first place. The opposite is true as well. They want to go. But if they don't trust your boat, it's time to address that fear. Are you guys with me? All right. Anthony says, great. Well, let me show you what Anthony says. Show and tell. <laughs> great analogy, Borino. I'm supposed to be going to Italy and Greece in May. Jason, my man. <laughs> Doesn't look very good. I'm sorry to tell you. My friend Jeff, I, I met on Friday, same thing. They had a whole family trip booked to Tuscany in April. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. They're on complete lockdown. 
All right. So is this helpful, guys? You need to know which fear is winning. And the moment the boat got a green light and the island got green light, guess what? You got the listing. That's how it works every single time. They cross that threshold of certainty. Yes, Jason is my man. Yes, the island looks fantastic. Honey, we're going to Hawaii. Getting it? That's how it works, my friends. So now, how do we address it in practical terms? I'm going to give you some practical words and dialogues. I'm not big on scripting. Like, I don't want you to recite scripts, but there are certain dialogue patterns you should incorporate to really figure out, can I help them? How can I help them? What's really going on? Okay? So let me give you some. First, decide. Oh, let me just change this. Good. All right. Decide, determine, when you're talking to the seller, am I getting, oh, let me just switch this. Oop. Oop. All right, good. What am I getting here? You're in a conversation with the seller and they will tell you something like, um, let's say it's an expired listing. You probably hear this a lot with expires and they say something like, um, we don't know what we're going to do. We're not sure. You need to decipher. Is it you or is it the move? As opposed to if they tell you the job transfer didn't go through, we're going to stay where we are. First one is an objection, fear-based. The second one is not an objection, it's a condition. So don't get stuck on conditions. Conditions simply mean there's nothing you can do about it. Are you with me? So if the job transfer didn't go through or whatever circumstances that are beyond the control of the seller and you, they are not going to sell, don't worry about it. So decipher conditions, nothing you can do. You shake their hand, you say, is it okay if I keep in touch? If I just keep you updated every few months or so what's going on in the market? You never know. Life can change, things can change, circumstances can change. Or maybe you run into somebody who needs a good, good agent, someone who they can help. Let me know. You set up follow-up, keep in touch with them every couple of months. If things do change, sometimes they do, but you move on. Don't get stuck on people who don't have a problem. If staying on the island is not a problem for them, you don't have a prospect. You can't offer a solution. Hear me on this, guys. This is important. If you cannot offer a solution, if they don't have a problem, you can't offer a solution, you don't have a client. That's a no-sale situation. Because that's going to be one of those, well, if somebody offers us 1.5 million, uh, excuse me, sir, your house is worth 300,000. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Moving on. Yes? All right. So now, let me show you few of the examples quickly here. All right. Here are some of the questions you can ask. What would be the best outcome for you guys? If you could have it any way you wanted to, would you rather stay here or would you enjoy that lovely home on the golf course down in Florida? Would you be close, rather be closer to the family or are you okay with the distance? What works for you? Good questions to ask. You're probing, you're probing what's holding them back. What pushes them forward? Comparing. You can say, uh, how much do you want to be closer to your family, enjoying the sunshine and the good life? How much does it matter to you? Aren't those good questions? It's a good language to use. Because what will happen is not only you will get clear, they will get clear. And now let's address the fear. So you can ask questions like, well, what worries you about the move the most? What concerns you? What are you concerned the most about? What is the biggest obstacle? This will help them kind of sort through their emotions. Now, of course, this requires a level of trust you need to have with them. But that's how you get there, asking these kind of questions. All right? Now, here is the problem. If they don't trust you, the number one reason they don't trust you is low status needy behavior. Please list with me, please. Where you need the listing more than they need to get to the other side. Too much needy, low status behavior instantly triggers defenses. It triggers lack of trust because they feel you have an inferior agenda, you have an ulterior motive. You need to get paid, you need the listing more than they need to move, more than you need to understand their situation and see if you can help them. Sellers may say something like, we'll go back to our previous agent. 
You've heard that, right? But what they often mean is we're going to go back to the agent we already know and trust unless somebody better comes along. Because what the seller is really thinking is comparing. Are you competent? Can we trust you? Are you our best choice? Sellers always want the best choice. Everybody always wants the best choice. So here's how you handle these. Any of these objections, we're going to use a four-step process. First, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge people. Yes, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Step two, you clarify, then you offer a benefit, and then you confirm. It's always the same. Acknowledge, clarify, benefit, confirm. So let me give you a practical example. We go back to the previous agent, you simply say, I appreciate that, Susan. It's good to have someone you already know and trust in this business, even if it didn't work out the first time. So where will you guys be moving to after the house sells? Notice what I do there. I acknowledge the objection, but I don't lose my cool. I'm not going to offer a very elaborate comparison why I am better than their previous agent or attack the previous agent with crazy stuff like, well, what are they going to do different this time? That just creates defensive. It doesn't lead anywhere other than contention and tension. So I simply acknowledge it. I go right along. I say, I appreciate that. It's good to have somebody you already know, but I do a little ding there, even if things didn't work out the first time. I'm not attacking the agent. I'm just simply pointing out you hired that fool and the work didn't get done. But I continue with the question, where will you guys be moving to? I continue the conversation using the technique UAQ. So I'll ask a question. I answer, but I follow up with a question. That means I stay in control of the conversation. Never attack the other agent, never put him down, because you really don't know. They can be a family member, a very close friend. And as a matter of fact, they may go back to that agent. That is completely out of your control at this point. But all I can do is control the conversation and continue it. Because just because they said they were going to go to the other agent doesn't necessarily mean they will. Because I have something they don't. Data. I have statistics. Because what they say at the beginning, fear-driven behavior. Sharks, sharks, sharks. And at one point, you're perceived just another shark in that water. At the beginning, you're just another salesperson to them. But through relationship communication, building trust, building connection with them, I can start reshifting the relationship I have with them, the connection I have with them. And that I will do by continuing the conversation, being kind, being high status, being confident. Because I know one thing. What they say at the beginning, we're going to go back to the old agent. Some people do. Some sellers do. But some don't. Even those sellers who sell, we're not going to sell. We're going to stay where we are. I lost so many listings because of that. Some do stay where they are, but some don't. And because their actions and thoughts and behaviors are driven by emotion. I know at the beginning, especially expires and FISBOs, there's distrust and hesitation, there's fear. I can work through that. Because again, I know that statistically, at the end, some of them will list. And even better, some list with you. Make sense? QAQ. Acknowledge, confirm, you hear them answer it if necessary or simply say oh that's good to have somebody you can trust where did you guys want to go and now i locked them into the question now i bring them into conversation controlling it continuing the conversation how soon would you like to be ideally what do you think went wrong mm, that's a bummer so if the right buyer walks in they fall in love with the house offer you a good price would you consider it well why don't we do this why don't we get together for 20 30 minutes let's just figure it out what is the most a qualified buyer would be willing to pay how long would it take realistically to get it sold is there anything we can do to the property to make it even more marketable get you more cash in your pocket and then we'll see maybe you're better off staying here i don't know you will decide maybe you're better off selling who knows but it's better and easier to make the right decision once you have all the facts that's all i'm offering come by my office tomorrow at 4 35 4 40 we'll grab a cup of coffee and we'll talk done and I'm not attached because some will say yes, some will say no, some will say jump in a lake, some will say uh, maybe later or no or whatever they say, I don't control. So I'm not too stuck on it. What I do control is how I communicate, how I feel, my confidence, my communication, my status. And that's what you need to focus on. And that's what I teach you. That's what we're going to work on in the boot camp as well. All right? Okay. So let me show you this. So that's the QAQ. Seller says, bloop, that's the house they're selling. Will you cut your commission? We all heard that one, right? Here is how we handle that one. 
First, understand this. Commission is way less important to sellers than you think it is. There was a company in my area started a long time ago called Help You Sell. We first thought they're going to clean up. They're going to take all the business. Look at this. This is from National Association of Realtors. Most important factor in choosing a real estate agent. Only 3% of the sellers think commission matters. It's way low. Way low. Commission doesn't matter a whole lot. Commission starts mattering to the seller. I mean, look at the picture. Which dentist would you go to? The one on the left, dentist A, charges $5. Dentist B charges $1,000. You need a root canal. Quick, which one would you go with? Sorry, I went too fast. <laughs> the $5 one, you would save a lot of money. $995. Or this one. Well, okay, I may be biased because I'm kind of chicken when it comes to dentists, but I would go with B. The problem is when you and the other agent you compete with are perceived the same. When Susie on the right, agent A, charges $12,000, and Steve on the right, agent B, charges $10,000, but they all will get the property sold and do a reasonably good job for the seller, then it would make sense from the seller's perspective to save $2,000. The commission only plays a role if you're considered the same. And let me tell you, offering the seller more marketing, drone shots, 3D tours is not something that impresses them because you don't get paid for marketing. You don't get paid for effort. You get paid for results. So the real answer is you need to establish high status from the very beginning. There was no wow factor. There was no like, holy shit, this guy is different. The way he communicates, the way he carries himself. We're in good hands with him. There was no connection, no trust. Maybe you did a poor first impression. That's very often trouble. Or your listing presentation was long and boring. Big guilty right here. I'm raising my hand. I know you can't see it right now. And the last one is you try to impress the seller. That's a low status. That means you're needy. You want the listing. Never do that. That's how you handle these things, guys. It is really in your status. It is in your communication. It is way more than just drone shots and 157 plan, plan of action. Those are the secrets. Crystal has a question. Let me pull it up. And I will zoom in, Crystal. Hold on a second. Bear with me, guys. So we can see your comment. Here we go. I have someone told me they plan to list in 10 days with another agency. It came down to me and them. Seller chose them because they have sold most homes in the county. They have not signed but told me they felt I did everything right but I tried to be more logical. Response. Uh, remember this, Crystal. That's a really good point. Sellers will reason and explain with logic something they decided emotionally. The emotion has triggered the decision. Now, what they felt was they're in better hands with the other agent. They justify and reason that with they sold more homes. But ask yourself this, Crystal. Agent A sells 10 homes. Agent B sells 15 homes. Logic would say agent B always a better choice. But that's not always the case, is it? The number of homes doesn't necessarily indicate the level of confidence, competence, compassion, trustworthiness. The agent B can be a complete crook and got the listings by being an asshole crook and a thief. They wouldn't be better off with agent B. Not necessarily, although logically, it would make more sense. Never fall into the trap of logic. It is not a logical decision these people make. They felt more connection. They liked, trusted, and respected the other agent more. The way they will explain it to themselves and to you, the other agent is the number one agent in the county. But if that was the case, how did all the other agents get listings? You follow it? You need to focus more on your status, on your communication, how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, how you create first impression, how much you trust yourself. It's the 3C formula I teach you guys. Compassion, confidence, and competence. And in one of these three, you failed. That's the bad news. The good news is you can fix it. Probably not with this seller because the more you're going to try to pry in, the more you're going to try to wedge your way in, and try to win that listing, the more desperate and needy you're going to come across and the less of a chance you have to get it. I think at this point, real estate is kind of like dating. You ever notice that? That <laughs> if you make a bad impression at first, if you come across as needy, sleazy, desperate, or shyster, sh shady, it's really, in most cases, impossible, but at least very difficult to fix that. 
And somewhere along the way, if we could analyze your interaction with this prospect, Crystal, with starting with your first impression, first interaction, your follow-up, and your presentation, we could probably pinpoint, and you could probably pinpoint, looking back, where you could have done something different, where you came across as either too arrogant or aggressive, not likely, most likely too needy, too nice, trying too hard to win them over, to have them like you. This is one of the biggest mistakes I made. Because I always thought when sellers like me, they're going to list with me. Not necessarily. They need to like me, trust me, and respect me. They need to consider me the best choice. They need to think nobody else will do a better job. We're not, there is nobody else who can get us to that island better. There's no better boat. Yeah? So learn a lesson. Practice your first impression, practice your follow up, practice how you come across. Now, of course, your marketing helps. That's why, like the expired package that you're going to get if you join the bootcamp, if you come join the bootcamp, there's a nice expired package. There's a brochure. Looks like this. It all congruently communicates. I know what I'm doing. I got a great boat. I know how to get you to that island right here. Because sometimes you have a chance to get the seller on the phone or meet them in person. Sometimes you don't. So you can mail this. You can drop this off. It's part of it. It's all part of it. And everything is pointing in the right direction. I know where you are and I know how to get you to where you want to be. Is that helpful? All right. So now, let me get my... What if the seller says, we must get, oh, let's go back, we must get $500,000. Yes, you're talking to the seller who wants more. So you say, Jim, I totally understand, acknowledge, right? You would like to sell the house for $500,000. I know you need to get as much out of it as possible. And if I had, you know, one of those magic wands like Harry Potter, boy, I would make it happen. I really would, but I can't. Nobody can. When you guys bought the house, remember that? A few years back, you paid 187000 what you thought was a fair price. Maybe you were a little nervous, maybe even felt that you paid a bit too much. But at the end, it was not the seller who determined the final price. Even if there was some back and forth, right, some negotiation. It came down to your decision as a buyer. And of course, the appraiser, the lender who okayed the price. That's it. So only the market determines what each home sells for, the buyer and the bank. Just like with a stock, a property has a market value. And as is seen by the facts, buyers who want to live in this neighborhood and in this type of a home are willing to pay up to 460000 And if these buyers feel the price is too high, then the house is not going to sell. You guys will be stuck here and nobody wins. You can't go to Florida, no grandkids, nothing. The fact is, we can only sell for what the buyer is willing to pay. Make sense? And now you're going to bridge it. So let's go ahead and list the property at a price that will cause it to sell so you can, and you enter whatever the island is for them. If the seller says, well, the other agent told us we can get 40000 more, you're going to start with a little different answer. You're going to start with a pattern interrupt. Hmm. Why was the other agent misleading you? Why were they lying to you? We all access the same data, so it's either he doesn't know the neighborhood that well, or maybe he, he may be new. Maybe he's out of the area. You notice that agents will give you a high price just to get the listing. They don't care if the house sells, so they get a few buyer calls and send them another house, maybe even your neighbor's house down the street, and later they will try to convince you to reduce the price, but even when your house doesn't sell, it's no big deal to them because they made their money on the other sales regardless. It's a good deal for them, but. I don't think it's a right, fair approach to you. Do you? So let's go ahead and list the property at the price that will cause it to sell. Bridge. Or Zillow. You always need to know what the Zillow estimate is before you go see a seller. So you simply say, yeah, you're absolutely right. The Zillow automated estimate is a bit higher. I'm glad you checked. Good job. Then again, you will not buy a house in Colorado based on a robot-generated price from Zillow, right? Nobody will. A qualified buyer will only pay what they feel is a fair price. They compare each house and pick the best one based on what they think is a fair market value, which in this case is about $640,000. Let me give you another example. When the, agent, when the seller says, other agent will discount her commission. Now, we already discussed commission. Only when you perceive the same is the commission a true issue. And you can say, well, we all want good deals, obviously, and all my clients want to save as much money as possible. 
each agent charges what they feel are worth, what they feel is fair. Now, if you look long enough, I'm sure you'll find a rookie or some bored housefrau married to a rich lawyer taking a break from QEC who will list your property for 500000 Would you trust an agent like that to handle something so important if they're willing to discount the commission? Think for a second. Imagine you're looking for a dentist. Would you use one just because he offers a root canal for $59? Big discount special? Of course not. This is the same thing. Selling a house is complex, and especially in this market, this day and age, and there are plenty of shady characters and hungry lawyers who would be more than happy to take a nice bite from your equity if something goes wrong. A lot is on the line, but it can be a disaster in the wrong hands just because you were trying to save a few bucks. Notice how I'm addressing the fear. I'm addressing the real concern. Will you lower the commission? Jim, that's an excellent question. You know what they say, you get what you pay for. I don't negotiate my fee because I think it's fair for everybody. And as you've seen, all the things my team and I do. So let's take, oops, let's go back. So uh, let's stay focused on the bottom line and the amount of cash you'll put in your pocket. So we close the transaction. Okay. Do you feel that's fair? Fair is a good resonant word. I use it a lot. Fair. How do you get good? Remember, mindset, practice. Incorporate the three C, compassion, confidence, and competence, and then with time. And you will get listings. Listings is a combination. Getting good listings, success in this business, today, tomorrow, this year, next year, is all just in four components. Mindset, I can do this. Other agents are doing it. People are making money. I can too. Build on top of the systems and skills, lead generation system, follow-up system. Then skills, how you communicate, how you price your listings, how you get them sold, and then taking action. That's the road. So I was talking about the boot camp. And I have an invitation for you. We're opening the registration. I think this is a perfect time for you to join. Because now more than ever, you really need to deliver good system, strong system combined with good skill, good communication, stuff like you just saw. This with a little bit of practice, you can do that. There will be people out there, expired listings, which should be number one source of business right now. Referrals, expired, FISBOS is the holy trinity. Out of those expired, especially if things continue to go the way they are, there'll be people out there who, don't, who can't sell, who didn't sell, who want to sell. And you can come in and help them. So what I've put together is a boot camp. This is not a workshop, this is not a class, this is something different. Where you and I will work together on your expired system. I will show you exactly where you're going to find the best expired listings, new and old, how you approach them. There's multi channel approach. Some you will call, some you will text, some you will mail, some you will visit, some you will email, send video, some you will do combination of those. Then I'll show you how to handle face to face meetings with these folks. The right questions to ask addressing their fear, addressing their concerns, listening, paying attention, connecting with them. You will see that most of these folks at the beginning put up a defense wall. We all do that. Remember, you walk into a store and say, I'm just looking. Ten minutes later, boom, wallet is out, you're buying stuff. They do the same thing. You will get a complete follow-up library. I'll help you set it up. What do you send? How often? How do you follow up? What do you say on the phone without pestering people, without being salesy? The whole thing I teach is all about not being salesy. So you will see, you can do that. And how to go from making the first contact to the actual appointment. All step by step. Now this will be, the reason I call it the boot camp is because this is not just me telling you what to do. You will know how to approach these people, how to build trust and connection with them all the way to a listing contract. But it's a workshop because these are the things I've done in my business. This really saved my ass with expired listings. <laughs> Do this, don't do that. We tried. You don't have to be needy, you don't have to be salesy, you don't have to be arrogant, no scripts, no aggressive selling. None of that is required. This is all based on human psychology. All the marketing is included. You saw the, the brochure. There's an entire expired package you will get. I will help you put it together. We're going to get it printed nicely so it creates great first impression. These can be mailed, these can be delivered, these can be handed to the seller. There's a version for brand new agents, version for veterans. You're going to get marketing templates, postcards, letters, market updates, thank you notes, all of that. You will get a complete set of scripts, text, emails, objection handlers, so you know what to say, you know how to say it. All of that is part of the package. 
plus a six month follow up sequence. Some sellers will be ready right away, some you will need to keep in touch. You will know how to do that. Big part of the bootcamp and what separates is an accountability because it's, these are interactive sessions over the web. You don't have to travel anywhere, which is good, right? These days, not, you wouldn't want to. These are live webcasts where you can ask questions, kind of like this one where you watch me, we talk, I show you the information, we break it down. Then at the end of each session, there'll be five live sessions. You will have weekly and daily assignments. So not only are you learning, but you're building it, you're going, you're moving. It is not just about passively absorbing the information, it's about putting that information to use right away. I want you to get listings right away. My goal for each and every participant in the bootcamp, and we're only taking 50 people, by the way, is to take three listings minimum while in the bootcamp. So this way you will make way more than the cost of the tuition, which is not that bad, by the way. You will set daily, weekly, and monthly targets. You will have direct support from me, my staff, my coaching staff, from my support team, plus your fellow students, and there's an accountability. That means you set specific goals, and we're going to help you reach those goals. This is me, Sergeant Borino. You will have these five weekly live training sessions with me. Registration is closing this week. Just be aware if you want to join us, and I'm sure you do. You must jump on it right now because we're starting Friday, March 20th, and before that, we need to send you the book. I'm going to show you the book in just a moment. This is the bootcamp that normally sells for $1,997, $1,997. The contents have been updated for 2020, so it's all brand new. But I wanted to make it affordable, so you have a couple options. Either you can take a $1,000 discount, and we'll make it even better. We split it into two payments. So it's like $4.99 to join. You get the bootcamp, materials, Expired Plus, follow materials and all that. Or you have a second option. I have a coaching program, private membership training program called The Path. And if you decide to take that route, you can test drive The Path while you're in the bootcamp. Now, if you like it, you can stay. If you don't like it, no harm, no foul. You finish the bootcamp and you can bail. You simply click a button on the website or send us an email, call us. One or another, let us know, hey, I don't want to continue The Path. If you want to do that, it's only 197. Regardless of this will get you the ticket to The Bootcamp. To sign up, go to goborino.com slash bootcamp. There are those two options. Pick one that works best for you. If you choose the path route, which I think makes more sense, you will get the complete new edition of the Expired Plus with all the materials, the book. You will get the path money mindset book, which is $197. You will get full access to my, I call it the Netflix of real estate. It's the Listing University with over 100 coaching sessions. You can binge on it. There are sessions on how to generate buyers, how to generate sellers, getting listings sold, working all kinds of niches, being a digital media, market mogul, controlling neighborhoods, divorce sales, all kinds of things. All recorded there for you so you can watch as many as you want. As a special bonus, you're also going to get my audio program called The Mind Matrix. And this helped me tremendously with my mindset because I understood that mindset is the foundation. And because I struggled with these limiting beliefs about success and money, I had to come up with a program that would reset those beliefs. That's what Mind Matrix does. It's an audio program with music and hypnotic language that I recorded for myself originally that now you're going to be listening and using. And of course, the bootcamp itself, which is 1997, this is all included for only $197 a month if you join the path. I can promise you, you will get results, of course. My minimum standard for a bootcamp student is three listings minimum. Now, these two guys <laughs> crushed it in one week. Five appointments, one listing, one expired, received the patch, call us, we were leaving. Now, they ended up, this is Krista and uh, Luke from Michigan, who ended up 12 listings in January in Michigan. Just one of many success stories. I, I'm showing this too to inspire you what's possible. So come and join us. Go to gobarino.com slash bootcamp. We'd love to have you on board. We're going to cut it off at 50 people so it is interactive and you can ask questions. And as a special bonus, one roll of toilet paper for everybody who enrolls. <laughs> How about that? Huh? Total value. Now, you can't resist this. This is gold, people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So these are the books you're going to get, among other things. You're going to get the welcome package. If you just join the boot camp, you're going to get this book that's over 100 pages of dialogues, checklists. Um, it's like a guide, step-by-step -step guide. This will come in the mail. Now, if you choose to join the path and take that route, you're going to get not just this book, you're going to get the money mindset and the first month of the path. Either way, we'd love to have you. So here's the URL, goborner.com slash bootcamp. Come join us. 
We're starting next Friday. Each session is about 90 minutes. They're all recorded. You're going to have access to the recording. So if you want to go back, replay something. But the, the value of the training is I take something complex as generating leads and getting listings, which expires should be the easiest, shortest way from the time you reach them to the time you list them. But even that can be overwhelming and complex and scary and uncomfortable, especially if you've never done them or you don't know exactly how to do it. That's why I built the whole system. But the cool thing is because we're going to take something so complex, I'm going to break it up into small, easy to digest little steps, little baby steps you're going to take with me. So that you can still run your business, you can still generate leads, you can still do all the other stuff, have life while we're growing this part of your business. So by the time we're done, you have an operational system. So you can go out there, reach new expires, reach old expired listings. Think about it this way. Statistically, and this varies by market. Each market is different. But in my area, about half of the expires go on the market pretty quickly. So you're seeing a lot of opportunities. Now, what about those people who tried six months ago and didn't sell? A year ago and didn't sell? Somebody's going to list them because just because the property didn't sell, just because they didn't get to the new island, doesn't mean their hope and dream and desire just disappears. Sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And with the right agent who has the right, no needy, no pushy, no aggressive approach, you can start building trust, you can start building relationships, and you can start converting these people. Maybe now, maybe with follow-up later. But if you do this consistently, your pipeline will be always full. Because friends, check your MLS, check the data. Don't go by what you hear. If you check the data, you're going to see that, yes, there are expired listings. Yes, there are relisting. Yes, they are looking for a good agent. How do they determine who they list with? Is to a great extent determined by the good first impression, good follow-up, and the three C's I teach you. Compassion, confidence, and competence. Does it all make sense? So come join us. Go to goburner.com slash bootcamp. Sign up for it. We'll send you the books. We're going to start the bootcamp next week. Especially in a challenging times like we are in right now. Especially in a market where nobody really knows where this is going to go. Having a solid, robust, core lead generation system in place can make or break your business and can make this an exceptional year. Because no matter what kind of shitstorm is out there, I've seen it over and over. There'll be some who will quit. There'll be some who stay but struggle. But there'll be some who will clean up, who will do well, and who will not just earn a lot of money, which you can, and you should, you're entitled to it, but in a process will serve the community, serve their clients, do a good job, and give this industry a little better name, better reputation, which we need at this time. All right. Do you have any questions? Anything I can help you with? All right. Why is mobile home loans different? Why is mobile home loans different? It has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. So that might be a lending question. We're going to leave that for later. Crystal, she says, yes. Hold on, let me turn this off. I was in PATH for about seven months, had to drop at the moment, going to be back. Would love to have, uh, have you back. Would love to have you back. All right, guys. So, goboran.com is the URL. Come join us for the expired bootcamp. A lot of the tools, principles, languages, marketing pieces, this is the best part, are modular. That means you can use them for other leads. You can use them in other circumstances, in other situations. You will develop skills that will be completely useful across the board, no matter where your leads come from, how you lead generate. You can apply them for referrals. You can apply them for open house because your status, your communication, your follow-up, the principles are still the same. You're building trust and relationship. The good news is with many of these sellers, you don't need months and months and months and months. I was reading some statistics like online leads now take about 400 days to convert. From the time the lead clicks a button, that if you even get a hold of them in the first place, till the time you get paid, it can be over a year. You don't have that kind of time. <laughs> this is a lot faster way to good leads, good prospects, good clients. You're seeing a lot of opportunities. I will help you find them. I will help you with the data, where to get the contact information, what to do about do not call registry, what to do in different situations, how to navigate it. 
to build that trust and connection. So at the end, well, they say, you're the one. We want to do business with you. All right, guys. So come join us. We'd love to help you. Okay. And with that, we're going to wrap up. Thanks for being here today. And not just today. Thanks for sticking it out. Thanks for being brave to say, we're going to weather this storm. And we will. This too shall pass, as they say. And it will pass. And there'll be better days, brighter days. But by then, I want you to help. I want you to have the system in place. I want you to know what to do. I want you to have good habits. I want you to have system in place that's cranking good leads, good appointments, good listings. Predictably. Because you can predict business. That's how I build my business on expired. I could predict if I can take 10 potential leads, 10 expired listings, five of those become my prospects that I follow up with. And if I accumulate 10 of those prospects, I can get one listing. So out of 20 expireds, 10 become prospects, 50% be conservative, one is a listing. Can you take 20 expireds? Yeah. Can you turn 10 of them into prospects where you have some kind of connection, communication, and relationship with them? Absolutely. I'll show you exactly how it's done. It's all a system. It's all a process. Not that complicated. This guy figured it out. You can figure it out. These guys know how to do it. I can help you as well. All right. Simple tools, very inexpensive. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars in marketing and advertising. You know, few few cents for postage is about all and printing these nice brochures designed specifically for expires. So you get their attention right up front. You get them right at the beginning. You start developing relationships. Even though they may say we're not ready yet, that's okay. This leaves a mark. This helps you be remembered. Opens the door for follow-up, opens the door for appointment, listing, commission. That's how it's done. That's how Rockstars do it. That's how Luke and Krista do it. That's how hundreds and thousands of my students do it, and you can too. I can teach you. I'm not very good at many things, but I am good at teaching this stuff. That's been my bread and butter. And they, they don't call me expired guru for nothing. So I can teach you guys. All right, so go to goboring.com, join me, and we will get started next week. Thank you very much for being here today, you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Hang in there. This may look like a big storm, but every storm eventually runs out of rain. So will this one. And good days are ahead. Clients, commissions, and freedom. And I'm not going anywhere. We will weather it out together, and not just weather it. We will win and succeed. This can be your year and a really good year. With the right mindset, the right systems, the right skill, and taking action, you can get there. I am convinced of that. All right. With that, Coach Borino signing off. I'll see you in the boot camp. Have a fantastic rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody. Ciao.